I'm leaving Birdsville now. This is essentially the end of my adventure. I've got a 2,000 kilometre commute to get home now. I've got about 260 kilometres of good gravel road and the rest is bitumen. I've finished my 10 day adventure. So I thought it was time for, to do a bit of a post-mortem. You can see from the picture the statistics of the ride. 4,700 kilometres in the 10 days. Used a heap of fuel. But it's been fun. Let's have a look at the tyres. I've got a Motos Tractionator GPS on the back still. It's the same one that I had on my previous ride. And on the front, I put on a, a Michelin Anarchy Wild. You can see there's still heaps of tyre were left. If I measure it, on an edge here that hasn't been worn, we've got 11 mil, and in the centre, we've got 6 mil. So, it's still, it's about half used. The Anarchy Wild has performed really well. I'm very happy with this. I'd done about 300 kilometers before I left, so this tire's down uh, 5,000 kilometers, of which 4,000 have been on highway speed miles. So again, if we have a look at the tire, we've got, hmm? that's not right. We've got about nine mil that hasn't been used. And in the center, we've got five mil. So we've used four millimeters up in about 5,000 kilometers. You can see there's still plenty of tire there. It is worn backwards a little bit, but not a, not a lot. You can see these side ones though. They are worn on the back side more than the front, which is typical of a knobby tire. But I'd certainly buy these again. They're not very noisy on the road. And they perform excellently on the loose gravel. I went away on this trip with all my camping gear, but I ended up only camping one night out of the, the, the nine nights away. I realised very quickly that my dodgy knees and my old age just is just too much for me now for camping. Getting down and getting back up again off the ground is just isn't for me. It was really cold, it was only about two degrees out, um, during the nights. But the camping year was okay, it was comfortable enough once I was on it, and I did remember to take my sleeping mat this time. But I've convinced myself that taking the camping gear is just part of the safety gear that I'm taking. Speaking of safety, I had my Garmin inReach, which was really good, because um, every couple of hundred kilometres or so, I would just send a check-in message back to Wendy, letting her know, know where I was. These messages, you can do as many as you like for the $25 a month. And it sends a I'm okay message with the GPS location, so Wendy can see exactly where I am at any um, time during the ride. I also had my lift tool with me. As you saw, I was able to use that to get myself off the east side of Big Red. Um, it worked okay. It was a bit of a challenge. The um, video didn't really show the slope of the hill because it was on the same angle as the, as the, uh, the, the hill. But um, after about the, the third attempt, I was able to get the bike back upright, which was great. Now, I could have just waited around um, longer and got people to help me lift it up, but it was good to know that I could do it all myself. Of course, as part of the um, safety gear, I had my um, Tech 7 boots, which I was really glad of, because when I 
binned it on that hill. I did damage my ankle a bit. It's only bruised, um, so I'll live. But it could have been worse if I had have been just wearing my um, former adventure boots, which are very soft and not very supportive. Of course, I was also carrying water and food so that if I did break down or, or something else happened along the, the remote sections of the track, I'd be fine until help arrived. So let's talk about comfort. I averaged about 450 kilometers, 470 kilometers, I guess, um, each day. Some days were longer, obviously, and some days shorter. But I was really happy with the comfort of the Africa Twin. I found the seat completely comfortable. I didn't get a sore butt at any stage. It was easy to stand up on the pegs and just stretch um, during some um, more boring sections. But the biggest comfort factor was the electronic cruise control. I can't overestimate how much that contributes to a lack of fatigue on those long, straight, boring highway sections. It's just fantastic to be able to set the cruise control, sit back, relax, and enjoy the view. The seat to peg height is also really good. I'm 190 centimetres. I've got the seat on the, um, on the, the higher position, which is uh, 870 mil. And I found that really good. Um, my knees were, were not overly bent, and so my dodgy knees didn't suffer um, from riding that distance. Of course, the heated grips helped. The whole ride was quite cool. Um, a lot of the riding was done in sort of um, starting in the morning at four or five degrees C and um, only climbing to about 12 during the day. So it was cool and the heated grips really helped. But the other thing that really helped was a down jacket. That is really magic to have underneath your riding jacket. And during the colder part of the day, it really kept out the cold. So I'm very pleased I took that. And of course you can wear that around um, at night. And if you don't want it, it packs down very small. So what went wrong? Well, one of my fork seals is leaking and um, I tried cleaning it with the, the old plastic bottle trick when I was at Birdsville. It did slow down the flow, but um, it didn't stop it leaking. So that's gonna have to be fixed. But apart from that, Really nothing went wrong. I only oiled the chain um, on the highway sections. As soon as the chain got dirty, I left it as it was um, because oiling it when it's dirty just, just keeps the grit on the chain. And I haven't had to um, adjust the chain tension at all. It's been perfect. The fuel range was also good because um, the uh, Adventure Sport has uh, the 24.8 litre tank. I didn't um, have any fuel anxiety. The, the fuel range really varied from about 450 kilometres to a, almost, almost 600 kilometres, depending on uh, how hard I was riding at the time. I found that the, uh, the highway sections used a, a lot more fuel than the, the dirt sections, obviously, because, you know, the dirt sections, you're going slower. But I had no complaints as far as fuel range went. Bike performance. My Africa Twins are DCT. I left it in DCT the whole time. I prefer the S1 mode. I know a lot of people prefer the S2, but the S1 mode was perfect for me, for my riding style. And even over the rough sections in the Flinders Ranges, the DCT performed perfectly, selecting the, uh, the right gear for the right time. What did catch me out though, was the traction control. I had contract traction control set on minimum, which for all my other riding has been really good. Um, it, it limits the amount of wheel spin you get. But I found on the real rough, rough sections on the Flinders Ranges loop in the Skytrek um, that the engine was cutting out from time to time and I was wondering what the hell's going on here? And I realised later it was the traction control just being overwhelmed by the really loose rocky sections um, on, the, on those steep uphill climbs. Now if I'd thought about it, I could have just turned that off and uh, everything would have been fine, but <laughs> I didn't realize till later. Lesson learned. 
The stability of the Africa Twin has really surprised me. It is so stable. On, the, on that hard pack with the loose gravel on the top, which is usually really skatey, the Africa Twin was so stable. I could just move around the track if I wanted to, if I needed to, to find the, the best line. And it was absolutely perfect. Of course, the Anarchy Wild probably helped, of course. Well, it would have helped. But the, sp the stability of the bike was sensational. And this is where the weight is at a real advantage because once you get moving, the, um, the, the, the uh, moving force of the bike just keeps the bike on a straight line. And so any little soft patch or, or little uh, rough patch, the bike just takes it in its stride and doesn't worry about it at all. I never had a problem with the weight of the bike other than in the sand on Big Red. And you'll see from the, the picture that when it was lying on its side in the sand, I just could not move it at all. Now, I've been able to sort of lift the bike in the garage with a bit of an effort, but I could lift it, but on the sand, could not move it. With the soft sand on my boots, I couldn't get uh, proper grip. And of course, my aging body wasn't able to lift it either. Fortunately, the lift tool did work. All right, let's sum up the trip then. I might look like the picture of health with my perfect body and youthful good looks, but my age and my laziness has really contributed to a lack of strength. And my dodgy knees and my dodgy shoulders uh, don't help either. So I've just got to face reality and the reality is that I'm just not good enough. If the slightest thing goes wrong, then I'm in trouble. If nothing goes wrong, everything's fine. I can cope okay. But I've got to realize that there's a risk reward in being out in a remote area on my own with a heavy bike and an old body. So I've decided that this trip is gonna be my last solo trip in a remote area with a heavy bike and an old body. I'm keeping the heavy bike, I love the bike. I bought it as a tourer, not as a extreme adventure rider. So I'm not sad about the fact that I won't do another one of these trips that puts me in, in so much uh, potential peril. Even though I really loved the trip, I'm glad I did it. I'm going to take it a little bit easier from now on. While I didn't feel much going home, there's still plenty to see. I just didn't capture most of it. But here's some of it that I saw on the way home. In the thick of the bush, just outside Mungandai, the one-ton post stands out as a remarkable physical monument erected by J.B. Cameron to mark the end of the arduous two-year task of surveying the straight section of the Queensland-New South Wales border from Cameron Corner to the Barwon River. Following the completion of the survey from Barrington to Cameron Corner, J.B. Cameron then set out to survey the 199.5 miles east from Barrington to the Barwon River. The one ton post was placed on the west bank of the Barwon River near Mungandai to mark the end of the survey of the 29th parallel degree of latitude in October 1881.